some of it. He talked about TSH and people with high TSH are more likely to have a thyroid malignancy. TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone which is secreted from the pituitary gland when the thyroid isn't functioning properly and it pushes the thyroid to push out more thyroid hormone which is T4 and T3 which you saw there. I, what I got from that was that people who've been exposed to head and neck radiation and chest radiation have a much higher than normal incidence of thyroid cancer, children in particular. Um, people have been exposed to radiation via Chernobyl and now we get to Fukushima must be watched very carefully. What we're seeing amongst the Fukushima children is of 100,000 of them, 42% have thyroid lesions by ultrasound, either cysts or nodules. And you can see within a cyst, a nodule can develop, which could be malignant. And with a nodule, which is a solid collection of cells, um, it could be malignant. And what he was really saying, Marek was saying, was that these children should have what's called a fine needle biopsy. You stick a very fine needle into the lesion, pull out some cells, and then look under the microscope to see if they're malignant. Now, in Japan, there are, they're only following children with large nodules um, and some abnormal cysts, I can't remember which. Uh, but as he indicated, small nodules can be malignant. And he also indicated it's very important to do biopsies on all of them, and that is not happening in the Fukushima population. Children with smaller than some estimate of nodules, I can't remember, Yuri, what size is it? Five millimetres, which is half a centimetre, so quite big. Children with five millimetres or less nodules are not followed up until two years where they get another ultrasound, yeah, which isn't good enough. So from that discussion, you can see that it is imperative. It's very rare to see uh, abnormalities in childhood thyroids, number one. Number two, when you do and you know these children have ex been exposed to probably high levels of radioactive iodine and a cesium, which is what Stephen pointed out, goes to the thyroid, they should be meticulously followed up. Already three have been diagnosed with thyroid cancer and have, thyroid, have had thyroidectomies. Seven are suspected of cancer. And that's just the tip of the iceberg because what I would say is that we didn't start to see thyroid cancers, and you saw it on the graph, for five years post-Chernobyl in Poznan, which was quite close to Chernobyl, and they got a high fallout. So these children are only two years post-accident, and it would indicate to me, I think, that they got a really high dose of radiation. And that would indicate to me other things, that it's not just thyroid cancer that is caused by radioactive elements. And there are many, many radioactive elements in the release from Fukushima, including strontium-90 and xenon, which can cause lung cancer and others, um, that it it is a bad, it bodes ill for the prognosis of these children because we know that every cancer can be caused by radiation. Every single cancer can be induced by radiation exposure. And these children are also eating radioactive food. And we heard that 10 million people are still in areas where they were evacuated around Chernobyl, but they still live there in Japan, many of whom were children, are children. So it was important to see what a thyroid, paediatric thyroid specialist analysed from... Um, well, he didn't analyse the Fukushima uh, ultrasounds, which I was hoping he would, but you got from what he said that, that we need to, they need to be doing much more in Japan. Um, so where I don't know what's going to happen to those children, but it's really quite a serious situation. And I spoke to uh, huge audiences of parents when I went to Japan recently, and they're terribly distressed. A, because they're not really told what the ultrasound means, and B, no one really has explained to them what it means, and C, they're not being followed up properly, they feel. 
Um, and of course, we're going to see much more in the future. So that's what was important for Dr. Uh, Nizella to make that presentation. And you can also look it up. It will, it will be, no, you can't. This isn't in the, this won't be in the record. It's been live streamed, but he specifically re requested that his presentation should not be recorded and put on YouTube and the like.